how do we define the complexity of the hypothesis space? So we've decided here to use a rectangle to separate uh, the blue points and the orange points. We've said we could use a circle or some sort of round shape. Um, there's actually a way to uh, define model complexity. Well, there's many ways to define model complexities. One of them is called the VC dimension, so from Vatnik and Shavonenkis, uh, who are two Russian mathematicians who uh, came up with this concept. Uh, and this relies on the concept of shattering. So uh, imagine you have n data points. So uh, they haven't been assigned any labels. You just have n data points on, your, on, on the space. Uh, so there are two to the n ways of assigning zeros or one labels to them. So each point can have zero or one. Uh, you have n points, so that's two to the n different combination. We say that H, so the hypothesis space, shatters n. If there exists a, hap a hypothesis H in our hypothesis space that is consistent for any of these labelings. So meaning, so I take <laughs> those points. So this is my training set. I have n equals three. I have two to the three way of labeling them uh, positive or negative. And whichever, whichever uh, way I label them, I want to be able to separate them using a hypothesis from uh, this hypothesis space. Um, so we'll have uh, some examples. Actually, I'm, uh, well, well, we'll see when we try to answer this question. Uh, and the VC dimension of the hypothesis space is the maximum number of points that can be shattered by this hypothesis space. I think I'm going to explain with the VC dimension of a line, and then I'll let you think about the VC dimension of a rectangle. Okay, so what is the VC dimension of a line? Can a line shadow two points? Uh, so two points is uh, relatively easy. Uh, there aren't so many ways to separate them, to label, label them. They can be either they are, so let's take those two points. Either they are both <coughs> positives, and then there's nothing to shatter, or they are both negative and there's nothing to shatter. You can put a line anywhere here. This separates things. Um, if one of them is positive and the other negative, you can put a line between them. And if this is this one that's negative and this one that's positive, the same line works. So a line can shatter two points. So you can see, I mean, the case where all the points have the same label are always easy. Uh, and the cases where they have different labels for three points, it's necessarily two of one label, one class, the other of the other class, and then you can always draw a line. Now can a line shadow four points. You cannot find, if I take those four points, uh, there's always one labeling that, for which I won't find a line that separates them. Here, if I want to separate those points, I need to draw two lines, right? So actually, my, my example here doesn't prove that you cannot shadow four points. In order to prove uh, formally uh, that uh, a line cannot shadow four points, you need to prove that there is no combination of four points for which a line can separate uh, them for any labeling. Uh, to come back to the definition, this is the maximum number of points that can be shattered by H. So for the line, there are configura configurations of three points that you can shatter with a line. <coughs> so the max and there are no configuration of four points that you can shatter with a line. So the maximum number is three. Um, so I'll give you a few minutes to think about the VC dimension of a rectangle that is aligned with the axes. So if you put, uh, so the same kind of rectangle that we've used uh, on all the previous slides uh, so you can't rotate your rectangle, it has to be uh, aligned with the axis in the plane. If the three points are aligned, you cannot shatter them. But there are configurations of three points that you can shatter. If you find any configuration of endpoints that can be shattered by a line, uh, then your 
then you can use this n. So if you see here, my three point example, so those are the three same points on all drawings, but I've shuffled the colors. Uh, okay, so shattering two points, I think everybody <coughs> got, got it, shattering three points. Uh, so it is possible to shatter four points if you position the points uh, in this way. So all the rectangles I've drawn, uh, so separating three from one uh, is kind of always easy. Uh, and when they're all the same class, it's also easy. The hard question is when you have two and two, I think that's where everybody was <coughs> at. Um, these are all the rectangles that separate two from <coughs> of those points from two of the others. Uh, so then if for each of those rectangles, you color the points inside one color and the, co the points outside the other color, you have all the possible, <coughs> possible labelings of these points two positives and two negatives uh, that are shattered uh, or separated by the rectangle. So I don't think there's any combination of five points that if you draw those points like without coloring them, uh, you can separate all groups of three from all groups of two. It can be three and one, but three and one is kind of easy. Wait, I can get those three in the same rectangle I can get those three in the same rectangle. I can get those three in the same rectangle. I didn't draw them because I thought they were easier to see. <laughs> yeah, I only drew the two, by two versus two because four versus zero is easy and three versus one, it's easier to see that it works. So I didn't want to overload the slide. If you have this and one that's here, yeah. you can always get one, you can also always get three. Uh, no, you can't get those three in the same rectangle. You are. So that's a problem. All right. You can get that one in its own rectangle, but you can get it the other way around. So that get would those be a problem. Three. Yeah, so that would be a problem. So what does this tell us? It kind of tells us that using an axis aligned rectangle, we can only guarantee that we're good at separating data in which we have data sets in which we have four points, and that if we have more than four points, we're not <coughs> guaranteed, well, if we have four points, we're already not guaranteed to have a rectangle that separates them, but uh, it sort of means that uh, if we have more than four points, separating them with a rectangle is, uh, is going to be tricky. Uh, Thankfully, the DC <coughs> dimension isn't related at all to the data you have. And in the data we have, the reason we decided to use a rectangle was because, was because a rectangle looked uh, <coughs> appropriate for the data. Uh, and uh, rather than when we find examples and we try to find tricky examples that can't be separated by a, by a rectangle. So what this is, uh, what this uh, this aspect of the problem, so the way the data looks like, uh, is the distribution of the data. Um, so this is what this sentence means. However, the VC dimension is independent from the distribution of the data. Is that, yes, if the data was completely at random in the space, it would probably be really hard to separate 50 points using one rectangle. But given that we chose a rectangle because it was appropriate for our data based on our prior knowledge of the problem, uh, then we can have still a hope to solve the problem, even though we have more points than uh, the VC dimension. Um, and so there are a number of ways to think about this. One is that the word changes smoothly, uh, which is to say that a point that's near me if I've chosen my representation space well, is likely to have uh, the same label. So if I say that uh, a car that has a given power and uh, a given price tag uh, is a family car, if I'm asked to pay 100 euros more for that car, it probably still is a family car. Uh, so this, this is <coughs> a concept that we'll use a lot uh, in uh, the following lectures. Um, okay, so meaning that 
I can't learn to separate any data set with a rectangle, but for this data set, it was a good choice.